So we're here at the uh, Twitter Chirp Hack Day and getting around and meeting all the cool developers here. So who are you? Uh, my name is Laura Fitt and I'm not a developer, definitively. Um, I'm the girl whose life got really changed by Twitter, uh, so much so that I ended up founding the first Twitter for Business Consultancy, writing the book Twitter for Dummies, and now I run 140.com, O-N-E-F-O-R-T-Y, uh, which TechCrunch calls Twitter's app store and I don't complain about that. Yeah. Why hasn't Twitter done its own app store? And, and when they finally do, because it seems like they're <laughs> when they finally do. You're so nice. You're so nice. What are you trying to do? Like the Arrington Loewy thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks, man. You this figured me out. Over. Of this is, no. No, 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 no. Um, we actually have a really good relationship with the Twitter API team. Um, obviously, they're some of the first people I started talking to when I had the idea. Like, look, you know, this is really needed. I was just stumbling and trying to get the book written and trying to tell business clients what tools to use. I couldn't keep up. I couldn't tell what was good. I didn't have like a Yelp for Twitter apps. So, so that's a lot of what we are is kind of, yeah. it's called a Yelp for Twitter apps. So we focus all our efforts on you know giving developers what they need. Obviously there's a lot of talk about, look, a platform involves monetization and distribution and we have both. You can offer app for sale, you can collect donations, we're working on subscription model. Uh, there's a to whole lot of plugins listed at our site, things like 140 proof, not really a plugin, but, a, but an option for developers. We have a simple developer dashboard, but over time it's going to get more sophisticated. So there's a button that's like make money, and then that links you to all the options you have to add ways to make money into your app. Um, we have API libraries, we have developer tools, and mainly we're just trying to understand their developers' business models and see how we can facilitate and support them. Well, that certainly is changing with some of the uh, new things like promote a tweet or tw promoted tweets, whatever they call them. <laughs> I'm still getting used to the idea that Twitter is going to have this ad model or this monetization model because they don't like well, they don't like it called. No, but uh, you know, <laughs> we're still trying to figure out what they're going to be good for. But what what's ha it, it, since you really have your finger on the pulse of what's happening in the Twitter ecosystem? What are you we've seeing? Been, we've been very lucky to. Um, kind of volunteer for and, and hopefully everybody on all sides is comfortable with us playing kind of a diplomatic role this week. Um, I heard from a lot of developers over the weekend. I heard from Ryan Sarver, the, the API lead over the weekend. Uh, he and I were friends before he even went to work for Twitter. Yeah. So that's helped that that pre-existing trust is there. And I could kind of, like a kid watching mom and dad fight, like I could see the Twitter side, I could see the developer side, I could see where they were just not understanding each other. Um, so I actually ended up sitting down, and this got portrayed very badly in the press, but just sitting down with like 27 great Twitter apps and saying, hey, what are you worried about? How can we be smart about running our businesses? You know, not a negative complaint session, not a cabal, but a really productive dialogue that we actually brought Ryan into for the last hour. So again, I mean, that man has a heart of a lion to walk into that room after all the hype. But it helped that, you know, I, I texted him. I said, we're good. We'd like you here. Please come. And, and the trust was there. So this face-to-face -face developer event is so key. Um, you know, that, that meeting Sir? was a good start, but it's really just all the face-to-face, -face, seeing words come out of Dick Lamel, seeing Ev talk. I had a developer after that meeting come over and say, you know, I was at Google when there were 200 employees. It was chaos, and it was hard to communicate with the outside. And, and hopefully we can have, I mean, everybody on all sides, 140, Twitter, the developer community, wants to see a lot of really innovative big businesses get built. So let's all focus on what we have in common and deal with the stuff that we deal as competitive forces, any marketplace has them, and get on with our lives. Yeah. Well, I, I, I see a really positive uh, mood coming out of this conference where going into it was like, Argh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and I, I think they really did win over a lot of developers just by showing up and by having these open discussions in the hallways and whatnot. I, I'd say they got more of the benefit of the doubt. Some aren't totally won over, some are still a little afraid, um, but that's reasonable. It's going to prove out over time. If in the next two to three months Twitter continues on this trajectory of better clarity and better communication, awesome. If over the next few months there really has been damage in the, uh, the flow of investment into the system and Twitter responds to that and says, no investors, it's safe, you can invest, that will tell developers a lot. Well, I found it very interesting that Ron Conway, who's one of the best investors in Silicon right. Valley, was in the hallway and he's saying, I'm all in, I'm still investing. So yeah. uh, still keep building your companies and still keep going after this market because he said this market's still ahead of us. 
I, I think so too. I mean, he said what uh, billion people and five public companies in five years. You know, five public companies might be a low number, right? Because I've had a thesis all along, and yeah, I'm oversubscribed to Twitter. I'm really, really into it, but it's a like, it's almost a whole new wave of the internet, right? And so, five years into the internet, there were more than five. Well, maybe not. I don't know my history yeah, that yeah, well. Yeah. I should be careful, right? Well, so into like, the web. Yeah, the whole the web. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, what's next for your business? What, what are we going to see you do and uh, just ride the wave? Because uh, having an app store is really valuable. I mean, Steve Jobs, what, what does he, he really have? You know, is it the iPad? Right, the right. iPad's worthless without apps on it. And I think I think the apps are brilliant. It's yeah. what makes the iPad. Well, and, and I think the apps are brilliant because the apps are what makes Twitter change people's lives. One of the reasons I wanted to see an app store was to have a place to cultivate that kind of innovation. There were like five different I have a crush on you apps on Twitter, mainly because there was no visibility for other developers to see, oh, well, four people have built that. I'm not going to waste my time. Twitter has attracted a very dynamic, excited, engaged community. They love to get excited and make things. And if it's very easy for them to find out what's already there, they're happy to go in a different direction. For the last two and a half years, I've been almost as a full-time job explaining Twitter to people again and again and again. Oh, it's so stupid. Oh, I don't get it. So we finally built a feature on our site that lets people, it's called toolkits, and the idea is to bundle together the tools you use to make Twitter effective for you, or to bundle together tools by a theme. Um, but really what it is, the, the secret underlying thing, is we want our entire community to spend their energy explaining Twitter to each other. Because no one point source can explain Twitter. Twitter is like the six blindfolded people describing the elephant, you know? To you it's one thing, to me it's something else, to Gary Vee it's something totally different, to Will I Am it's something completely different. And we each use it different ways and it takes somebody seeing a use case they can relate to for them to get over that it's too hard curve, right? And we already have, we launched the app, mm, or the, the feature like Six days ago, we already have 100 use cases written up in detail. Here's the tools, here's how to use each tool, and here's what you accomplish. Okay. So we're excited about that. And anybody who makes one is featured on the top four newest. So a little chance at a uh, Twitter celebrity for those who are not Scoble. Very cool. Cheers. Well, I'll have to go fill one out so I get onto the top. You know? I'll put you in the spotlight. <laughs> Thank you very much.